Welcome to the worship of First Christian Church in Black Mountain, North Carolina. We're so glad that you've joined us in worship today. Whether you are a member of this congregation or just visiting with us, we welcome you and pray that you will be blessed through this time of worship. At the beginning of a new year, we look forward to a gradually brightening world. We pray for God's light in our darkness and for God's promises of justice and righteousness. On this Epiphany Sunday, may we, like the Magi, have a star to guide us on our journey, and may we hear and share the good news of the birth of light and love, which can transform our lives. Stand up and shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is setting us ablaze with light. Lift up your eyes and look around. Now is the time to see and be radiant. It's time to rejoice, for God is at work. Let us worship the Lord our God. of so much difficulty and darkness, O God, we rejoice in the light which came into the world in Jesus, the one we claim as Christ. As we worship, help us celebrate the shining light which led travelers to find the child Jesus so long ago, and the light which continues to lead us to find and follow the Christ who is light of the world. Amen. Arise, shine, your light has come. The Lord's glory has shone upon you. Though darkness covers the earth and gloom the nations, the Lord will shine upon you. God's glory will appear over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to your drawing radiance. Lift up your eyes and look all around. They are all gathered. They have come to you. Your sons will come from afar and your daughters on caregivers' hips. Then you will see and be radiant. Your heart will tremble and open wide because the sea's abundance will be turned over to you. The nation's wealth will come to you. Countless camels will cover your land, young camels from Midian and Epha. They will also come from Sheba, carrying gold and incense, proclaiming the Lord's praises. Let us join our hearts in prayer. God of all beginnings and God of all middles and endings as well, we pause at the beginning of a new year to worship and to ask that it may be a year lived in your will and your grace. Let your spirit come into our lives that we may be different in the days ahead. Teach us humility 
that we shall not act in our own conceit. Give us love for every creature and every creation that we may walk reverently in the world. Give us a sense of wonder that we may see your presence everywhere. Shine your light of hope in the corners of gloom in our lives and in our world. Shine on those who are lost to show them a new path home. Shine on those who are ill, those who are discouraged, those who are fearful, or those who are just plain tired. The future is in your hands, O oh God, and we cannot know what it will be. But we do know this one thing. If we are willing to put our lives fully into your hands, then the one who holds the future will also hold us close in love and mercy. Speak to us in our worship, we pray, that we may have a renew renewed sense of your presence in our lives, ready to serve you in the world. We pray these things in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Today we read of the Magi and their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, gifts of gratitude and honor. And what about us? Don't we also seek to honor God? Let our offerings be filled with honor and gratitude. Let us give our gifts with joy and thanksgiving. Let us pray. Ever giving God, we thank you for this new calendar year and the opportunity to begin with thanksgiving. Help our gratitude translate into actions of generosity and care, beginning with this offering. Receive these gifts, help us use them wisely, and rejoice in the light which continues to come into the world. Amen. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the territory of Judea during the rule of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We've seen his star in the east, and we've come to honor him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. He gathered all the chief priests and the legal experts and asked them where the Christ was to be born. They said, In Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what the prophet wrote, You, Bethlehem, land of Judea, by no means are you least among the rulers of Judah, because from you will come one who governs, who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and found out from them the time when the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search carefully for the child. When you've found him, report to me, so that I too may go and honor him. When they heard the king, they went. And look, the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother. Falling to their knees, they honored him. Then they opened their treasure chests and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Because they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they went back to their own country by another route. Sure. 
Happy New Year. We made it 2021. At the start of a new year, I usually wonder how long it will take me to remember to write 2021 on checks and things. Not this year. I am so ready to leave 2020 behind, I don't think I'll have any trouble remembering to write 2021. Last year, it feels so good to say that, last year was a dark year. But I hope and pray that we are coming out of the darkness into the light of a brighter future. Last week, when we were trying to see the convergence of Jupiter and Saturn, I learned about a website called Dark Sky that forecasts the weather, tells about things like cloud cover, and suggests places that will give you the darkest sky. While helpful in our time and place, I couldn't help thinking about the dark skies of my childhood. Growing up in a rural village in the Congo, the only electric lights we had were when we ran the campus generator for three hours every night from 6.30 until 9.30. When the generator was turned off, it got dark, very dark, all at once. Whoever was operating the generator, and I took my turn at that when I was home from boarding school, was supposed to blink the lights once as a warning and then wait five minutes before turning them off for the night. That five minute warning was so you could light a candle or a kerosene lantern and not be stumbling around in the dark. Occasionally, either we'd not be quick enough or the generator operator didn't wait long enough, and the house would be plunged into darkness. We'd fumble around for the matches and the lantern. It's amazing how dark a house can be when there's no outside light, and how bright a single match can be when lit in a dark house. One little match can light up the whole room. People are looking for some light in their lives. The darkness and gloom have settled in, and we keep hoping someone will light even a small light. What makes it feel so gloomy and dark? It's not just the short days of winter. We've lost a lot in the past nine months. We all know at least someone who's come down with COVID-19 and many of us know people who have died. Many have lost jobs. Others have lost businesses. We've lost our sense of connection. We can't worship together in our building, can't go to a movie or a concert. And worst of all, we've not been able to gather with family for birthdays and Christmas. It has been a COVID Christmas. And on Wednesday night, it was a COVID New Year's Eve in Times Square. Our sense of isolation makes the gloom feel even more oppressive. It feels dark. This is not the first time that God's people have faced the kinds of losses that make it feel dark. In today's passage from the Hebrew Bible, the prophet Isaiah announces for darkness covers the earth and thick gloom covers the nations. We may be saying, yeah, that's pretty much how I feel this Epiphany Sunday. But Isaiah was not speaking to people living through a COVID Christmas. Isaiah is speaking to God's chosen people who have lost almost everything. Centuries before the birth of Christ, Israel was defeated by foreign powers. The temple was destroyed, the walls of Jerusalem torn down. Many of the Jewish people were carried off to exile. They hoped and prayed that they would someday return home. But as the waiting grew longer, their world grew darker. Loss will do that to you, even if you are a person of faith. Yet even as God's people experience darkness and gloom, 
God was at work. And this is Isaiah's message. Yes, darkness covers the people, but Isaiah also says, upon you, the Lord shines. To the people who were bowed down due to all they had lost, the prophet declares, arise, shine, for your light has come. What an amazing promise. Yes, you are in a moment when the darkness is real, but God's light is more real. Again and again, Israel is told that God's light will shine on them, shine through them and in them. Other people from other places will see God's light shining through these formerly gloomy people, and they will stream towards God's people bringing gifts, praising the Lord. Isaiah's prophecy points toward the experience of the Magi, these non-Jewish wise people who follow the light of a star. They come from other nations, riding toward the place of the Messiah's birth, bringing the gold and frankincense of which Isaiah speaks. Jesus, the baby they make an epic road trip to come see is the light of the world. His birth conquers the darkness. The Gentiles represented by the Magi are drawn by that light to celebrate what God has accomplished for all people in the birth of Mary's son. Isaiah says that the darkness was real the losses were real. And the light, well, the light was God's. The people themselves were not the light, but Isaiah says that God's light is going to shine upon them and through them, and that is how they will see their way home. And when others see God's light shining through them, they too will stream toward the Lord. When my mom lit the little kerosene lantern in our house in Milundu, she lit up the room. But she wasn't the light. Yet she knew where to find the light and how to share the light. When John the baptizer appeared in the desert, he said very plainly, I am not the light. But he knew where to find the light in the same place the Magi found it in the child of Bethlehem. Jesus is the light. I think we can take comfort in this message of Epiphany. I find comfort and great freedom in the fact that I am not the light of the world, and neither are you. We know who the light is. It's Jesus. We know who can dispel the darkness, Jesus. We know who the Savior is, it's Jesus. Sometimes we can become overwhelmed by the gloom we encounter in this world, the challenges we see before us. All of that is real, but it is not up to us in our human limitations to figure out how to fix everything that's wrong in the world. Someone has already done that. God has done that through Jesus. And our mission, our calling, our Christian vocation is not for us to figure out how to save the world. Our mission, should we decide to accept it, is to get ourselves out of the way enough so that the light of Christ can shine through us, piercing the darkness, lighting the way for others. We are not the light, but we can allow the light to shine through us. The Magi brought gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Perhaps our epiphany gifts to the Lord could be our humility our willingness to let God be in control, our desire to let Christ, not my ego, be the guiding light for my life. 
number of years ago, I worked for First Presbyterian Church in Lynchburg, Virginia. That church has a beautiful facility, including a number of stained glass windows. The largest one over the chancel depicted the transfiguration of Jesus. It's a beautiful window. And when the sun is shining outside, all the pieces of colored glass cast little spots of color all over the sanctuary and the picture seems to glow. But if you are there at night, that magnificent window is rather dull and plain looking until someone turns on the spotlight outside. Then the window can be seen again in all its color and beauty. In and of themselves, windows can do nothing. But when the light shines through them, each unique piece of that glass shines its beauty and color, and together they can tell their story. On this Epiphany Day, God knows that some of us feel gloomy. But remember, the God who pierced the darkness with the light of a star is fully capable of piercing whatever darkness surrounds us right now. We are not the light of the world. Jesus is, and his light never fails. We Christians are like stained glass windows. We are each unique parts of the body of Christ. Let us pray that we will be open so that God's holy light can shine through our lives. Imagine how beautiful our world will be if we let Christ shine brightly in us every day. This is how Christmas makes its way out of the stable and into our lives. Arise, shine, your light has come. Amen. Matthew doesn't give us many details about the Magi's visit with Joseph and Mary. How long did they stay? Other than giving their gifts, what else did they do? Did Mary offer them food before they left for their own country by another road? For 2,000 years, table fellowship has been part of what connects Jesus' followers. At this meal, all are welcome. At this table, there is a place for you, even if we're removed from this sanctuary and connected via cyberspace. Wherever you are sharing in a simple meal, remembering Jesus, may you too be overwhelmed with joy. For the glory of the Lord is setting us ablaze with light we have seen the light of Jesus, and we come to pay him homage. Come, the table is spread, and the feast awaits.
supper that evening in the upper room, Jesus took bread and after giving thanks, he broke it and he gave it to them saying this, bread represents my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way Jesus took the cup and after giving thanks, he poured it and he gave it to them saying, this cup represents the new covenant sealed in my blood and poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Gracious God, we come to you this first Sunday of the new year, thanking you for all you have provided for us. We do not know what the new year will bring, but we know that you are with us and that we belong to you. As we go into the new year, we give you thanks for sending your son to live among us and to give his life so that we might live with you forever. As we take the loaf and cup, we again accept the meaning of the bread representing Christ's body and the cup representing his blood shed for us. Thank you, God, for this amazing gift. Thanks for Jesus. Thanks for your Holy Spirit. Amen. As often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we remember the Lord's life, death, and resurrection and proclaim his ongoing presence with us. Next Sunday, we will not be having a worship service from First Christian Church. We invite you to visit another church's online worship. 
You might especially be interested in worshiping with a Disciples online community called disciplesnet.org. This community has been worshiping online since before any of the rest of us even considered it. This is their mission, disciplesnet.org. And now friends, having found what we are looking for, let us go into God's world, bearing the light of hope and peace to do the will of our God. Amen.